Hey, it's Jack with NSF. There's a full Starship stack on the launch mount once again, but are we actually getting close to launch? We were excited to get in the air on Tuesday, just after the two vehicles had been stacked, to ponder that very question and document this moment in spaceflight history. I'll be hanging out down here in the corner to give you a step-by-step -step description of our flight. I say our because it wasn't just me on board, I was also joined by Nick and Coop. So after we taxied and took off, the very first thing we had to do was climb to 10,000 feet to get above the TFR. For you aviation noobs out there, a TFR is a temporary flight restriction. There is a 10,000 foot restriction above Starbase, and we of course want to abide by all the rules and regulations. As we arrived at the launch site and gazed upon the glory that is a full Starship stack, a question lingered. How close are we to launch? Well, mercifully, SpaceX tweeted today that teams are stepping into a series of tests prior to Starship's first flight test. This includes full stack wet dress rehearsals and hold down firing of Booster 7's 33 engines. So there we go. We're into the realm of pre-launch testing, finally. But what does that mean? Well, full stack wet dress rehearsals are essentially fueling tests that take the vehicle through its entire launch countdown all the way up to, but not including, engine ignition. To date, we've only seen a full Starship stack fueled partially, so this is an important milestone ahead of launch. And of course, once that's complete, the next milestone is the fabled 33 engine static fire. This is similar to how Falcon Heavy conducted a static firing of all of its 27 engines ahead of its first flight. Super Heavy will have to do the same. Once these two milestones are complete and the FAA issues SpaceX a launch license, we will finally get to see Starship's orbital flight test. The list of milestones continues to shrink, and it's exciting that we're at this point in the flow. That's not all that's going on though. As we arrived at and began orbiting the launch site, we all immediately noticed Booster 9 was at the gate and getting ready to roll back to the production site. We could not have timed this any better. And the best part is, is it was pure luck. Thanks, photo gods. Shooting photos, and especially video, without a gimbal from 10,000 feet is no joke, as you can see from Nick's strained expression here and my squinty troll face there. So please forgive a little of the jello that you see at the edge of the frame from the stabilization I applied. As we continued to orbit, Booster 9 did indeed leave the launch site and made its way back to the production site, affording us some really choice views. I still can't believe we're so lucky. Here it is, scooting back up Highway 4 to the production site like a giant steel sundial. It's pretty cool to see its shadows stretch across the landscape like that. And here's a wide shot. Interesting how this perspective can make something so big look so small. And here is a sort of a top-down shot. Check out that beautiful forward dome. Here's another shot of it rolling down the highway forward towards the production site. And here is Booster 9 arriving back at the production site. Speaking of the production site, there's so many interesting things to see here, I'm just gonna rattle off a bunch of them real quick. There's a booster aft dome that all 13 of the center Raptor engines connect to, a booster forward dome, two forward ship domes, ship 27's nose cone, a ship mid-lock section with aero covers and TPS tiles, which is most likely ship 28's. There's Booster 10's forward section in the mid-bay, a booster thrust puck that was recently delivered, a nose cone and payload section outside and inside the windbreak respectively that's getting ready for testing in the nose cone jail, a booster header tank, and part of a transfer tube. The header tank is what holds the locks used for landing. It's basically a small tank within the locks tank. Yo dog, I heard you like tanks. And the transfer tube is part of the plumbing that gets the methane from the upper tank where it's held through the lower locks tank and through the header tank to the engines. Finally, there's these mega bay workstations which haven't yet been installed. These go on the interior corners of the building. All of that, and I'm almost certainly still missing things. Some of these things might be test articles, one-off pathfinders, parts waiting to be scrapped, and some might be flight hardware. Pretty cool. All right, that's the production site. Booster 9 is now safely in the Mega Bay and will be getting outfitted with avionics, Raptor engines, and everything else that it needs to go from essentially a tube for pressure testing into a real rocket. Heading back to the launch site, let us once again gaze upon the majesty that is a Starship full stack. By the way, if you need a mnemonic for what is where in the orbital tank farm, try LOX is on the left if you're looking at it from the road. So that would be LOX, 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 water, nitrogen, nitrogen, uh, the failed methane tanks we won't talk about right now, and the methane tanks they brought in to fill that lost capacity. As we continued to orbit the launch site, we got some pretty cool views. Each pass is different, and each provides different views of the vehicle, even though you're essentially just going around in a circle. For example, here's some top-down angles of the stack. I love this view. 
If you like the photos you've seen in this and you want to download them, become a YouTube member for all the ones I've shown and many, many more. We also have a few available in our merch store as beautiful metal prints you can easily hang on your wall. No frame required. We simply can't do things like this without your support, so thank you. Last up for this flight, we took a trip over to former Massey's Range, where SpaceX has established a test facility. I'll leave the analysis of everything visible in this imagery to folks that are much smarter than me, but there's clearly a lot going on, including what looks to be some sort of foundation work and a test tank on the structural test stand. So we know now, for sure, the milestones that need to be completed ahead of the first Starship launch. They were outlined in some NASA documentation previously, but it's nice to have confirmation from SpaceX themselves. And it's nice to know we're indeed finally into that flow. A fully stacked Starship is a really amazing thing to see from both the ground and the air. If you have a chance to make your way down to South Texas and see it, I highly recommend it. Okay, that's it for this video. Tell us what you thought in the comments. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button. There were so many cool shots on this flight, I'll leave you with some extended epic views and some lo-fi hip-hop beats to chill and watch Starship to. See you next time.